I even tried to tell them that I would stay in a hotel room for the night and meet them in the morning. But in the end, they insisted that I stay with them to make sure I was okay. As soon as we got up the following morning, we sat down to breakfast, which was French toast and eggs with a bowl of fresh fruit, all prepared by Georgia, and made a plan for the day. Thomas decided that he was going to cancel all appointments and take the day off to help me with my situation, and Georgia found somebody to cover for me at work for the other therapists that were in the office. By the time everything was situated, we had finished breakfast and we all got into the vehicle to head over to the police station so that we could resolve everything. As comforting as it was to have the two of them there with me, it also made things seem a little bit awkward. Thomas kept giving me the knowing look that he would always give his patients whenever he felt as though they were hiding something from him, and I couldn't figure out what exactly was on his mind. Meanwhile, Georgia was her sweet and innocent self, acting like a protective mama bear whenever dealing with the police. For me, it felt strange, especially since she was about the same age as my mom when she died two years ago in the car accident. But I didn't mind. I already knew that if my parents were alive, they would have done the exact same thing. So you finally caught the little whore, Jake said when he arrived at the police station later that day. It's about time I got my vehicle back. It was no surprise that Sarah was with him too, and she was giving me a smug look as she stared me down. Don't forget to put that she tried to assault me, she said as she approached the police officer that was waiting to take their statement. I ended up miscarrying last night because she hit me. Next to me, Georgia tensed, almost as if she was going to get up and smack some sense into the two of them. However, Thomas stopped her before she could even make a move. Well, that's funny, because you've been cheating on Indy for quite some time now, and just tried to steal her house, cars, and everything else, he said as he stared Jake down. Jake burned red in anger as he started to say something but Thomas turned his attention to Sarah. Let's also not forget that you've always been jealous of Indy. Sarah's face flushed with the same amount of anger as Jake's had whenever he was called out in front of the police like that. What happened to doctor-patient confidentiality? She demanded, recovering almost immediately from the shock of his words. You could get into a lot of legal trouble for saying that. Much to my surprise, Thomas smirked as he shook his head in response to her, looking like he knew something that she didn't. Actually, if I ever suspect that you're going to try to hurt somebody, or yourself, I have every right to go to the police, he informed her as he crossed his arms. That means that every time you said that you wished to kill her just so you could take over her life, I was obligated to file a police report. It was at that second that the two of them saw the police that had already come out with the handcuffs, and Jake started to shake his head in disbelief. You can't do this to us, he protested, as he looked around for anyone who could have possibly helped. It was at that exact moment that his gaze landed on me. Tell them the truth. We didn't do anything wrong. When I didn't say anything, he narrowed his eyes at me and I could tell that he was even more upset by the situation than he already was. You better watch your back. I'll make sure that you don't get away with this. Everybody's gonna know the truth. With that, the police arrested the two of them and pulled them away, leaving me alone with Georgia and Thomas. The two of them smiled as they turned to look at me, looking proud as they did so. I think that settles everything, Georgia said as she wrapped her arms around me. Who's up for some lunch?